A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 4th of April 2022. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, let's start our discussion. See this text and context article. It talks about the NFC technology. See this NFC technology is used for instant payments. And this kind of technological innovation is important for both our prelims and mains. See in our prelims we can expect science based questions and in our mains it is important because questions based on technologies and then questions like steps taken towards attaining digital India goals may come. So by quoting this NFC technology you can enrich your mains answer. And you can also utilize each and every point of this discussion to enrich your preparation. See under this article discussion we will see the NFC technology in detail, we will cover what is NFC technology, how does this tap to pay feature pave way for easier monetary transactions on smartphones and what are the other uses of NFC technology. But before that the syllabus relevant to the article is given here for your reference, please go through it. See Google Pay or GPay has recently launched a new feature in India. I am sure you all heard about it. Yeah, it is the tap to pay for UPI. See till now we have come across tap to pay using cards, right? But here the new feature is tap to pay for UPI. This is launched in collaboration with Pine Labs. See this tap to pay feature makes use of near field communication technology. That is why the abbreviation NFC. So here what happens? NFC enabled Android smartphones and UPI accounts linked to Google Pay can carry out transactions just by tapping their phones. You have all seen how a card can be tapped right. Likewise using this technology that is the NFC technology you can tap your phones. Here the phones can be tapped on any Pine Labs Android point of sale terminal across the country. Like I said till now tap to pay was only available for cards. Okay. So we saw the technology and we saw what is the new feature in it. Now let us see what is this NFC and how does it work. See near field communication or NFC is a short range wireless connectivity technology. It allows NFC enabled devices to communicate with each other. Thereby it transfers information quickly and easily with single touch. For example, it can be used to pay bills, exchange business cards, download coupons or share a document etc. Now let us see how does this NFC technology work. See NFC transmits data through electromagnetic radio fields. This is to enable communication between two devices. Here point of sale terminal and the Android smartphones which have the NFC technology. These are the two devices between which the communication is going to be established. Since the transaction take place within a very short distance both the devices must contain NFC chips. See for data transfer to occur the NFC enabled devices must be either physically touching or within a few centimeters from each other. Okay. So this is how the NFC works. When they are so close to each other, a single tap will transfer the information and you can make the transaction very easily. And with this basic understanding about the NFC technology, now let me tell you about how the recently launched feature works. That is the tap to pay for UPI. See users with the UPI accounts configured on Google Pay will make payments just by tapping their NFC enabled Android smartphones on any Pine Labs Android POS terminal that is the point of sale terminal. Once the users tap their phones on the POS terminal it will automatically open the Google Pay app with the payment amount pre-filled that is the amount will be filled already and you don't have to type the amount that you have to pay. And at this time users can verify the amount that is you can check whether the amount is right or not and you can check the merchant name and then you can authenticate the payment or otherwise you can reject it. In case if you decide to authenticate the payment then you can do it by using the UPI pin that you have. And once the payment is successful the user will be notified. This we all know right. Now let us see the advantages of this NFC technology with tap to pay feature. 
Firstly, the process is much faster compared to scanning a QR code or entering a UPI linked mobile number. And that is how we are making the payments now, right? Whenever we visit a store, we are scanning the QR code or we are entering the mobile number and then we are making the payment, right? But with this technology, you just have to tap your phone on the terminal. That's all you have to do. So obviously, it is much faster. Now coming to the second advantage, in other technologies like IRDA technology, the receiver devices need their own power supply. This is due to larger working distance. Therefore, the receiving device that is the terminal cannot be powered by the radio frequency RF field like in the NFC. And also note that IRDA technology uses infrared light. That is exactly why it is termed as IRDA. See, it uses infrared light where the two communication devices must be positioned within a line of sight. And this is not suitable for transfer of large amount of information. Right. So in this way, NFC technology is much more beneficial. Now coming to the third advantage, it is the short range connection. You may think larger working distance is beneficial, but it requires the user to configure their device and to pair them together for communication. So, in case of larger working distance connection cannot be initiated by a simple touch gesture like in NFC. So, that is also an advantage. Okay, now we saw about the technology, how it works and what are the advantages. Now, you may ask, is it safe? Don't worry, I have an answer for that also. Firstly, it is not easy for attackers to record the communication between the devices. That is the point of sale terminal and the Android smartphones. This is because the NFC technology is designed for an operation between devices within a few centimeters from each other, right? We saw how does it work. In that what we saw, we saw that smartphones have to be tapped on the point of sale terminal or it has to be within few centimeters from each other. So, it becomes difficult for the attackers to get connected. Thus, the security level of NFC communication is by default higher compared to the other wireless communication protocols. Secondly, the NFC forum added the peer-to-peer -peer communication that is P2P. This mechanism is used to cipher all the exchanged data so that we can avoid external interpretation of recorded communication. Since the receiving device reads your data the instant you send it, NFCs also reduce the chance of human error. Now you know how safe the technology is. And if you want to know where else this NFC technology can be used, just take a look at this image here. And with this we have come to the end of our discussion. We'll have a quick recap. We saw about the new feature that is the tap to pay for UPI launched by Google Pay. And we saw about the near field communication technology which is a short range wireless connectivity technology. This technology allows the NFC enabled devices to communicate with each other. And after that we saw how it works. See for the data transfer to occur, NFC enabled devices must be either physically touching or within a few centimeters from each other. It transmits data through electromagnetic radio fields. And after that we saw the advantages which is it is faster compared to other methods such as scanning a QR code or entering a UPI linked mobile number. And uh, we saw that it does not require power of its own. And another advantage is that it has short range connection. And we saw the safety of the NFC technology. In that we saw it is not easy for attackers to record the communication because the NFC technology is designed for an operation between devices within a few centimeters and it makes difficult for the attackers to get connected and the NFC forum added peer-to-peer -peer communication. This will avoid external interpretation of recorded communication. And with these points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. See this news article here. This article is with reference to Indo-Pacific and Sagar. Do you know what Sagar is? Yeah, it is the security and growth for all in the region. See, yesterday, President of India, Mr. Ramnath Govind, addressed the young diplomats of Turkmenistan at the Institute of Internal Relations at Ashgabat. He said that the dynamism and vitality of the region make the Indo-Pacific a global economic center. 
He assured that India will stand for an open, balanced, rule-based and stable international trade region in the Indo-Pacific. He also said that India's approach is based on cooperation and collaboration and is elaborated through the vision of Sagar that is the none other than security and growth for all in the region. And this is the crux of the article given here. In this context, let us learn Sagar in prelims perspective. So aspirants listen carefully. See, Sagar stands for security and growth for all in the region. This initiative was unveiled in the year 2015. Note here, it was unveiled in 2015. It is a maritime initiative which gives priority to Indian Ocean region for ensuring peace, stability and prosperity of India in Indian Ocean region. So, Sagar is a maritime initiative. This you have to remember for prelims. Through Sagar, India seeks to deepen economic and security cooperation with its maritime neighbours and assist in building their maritime security capabilities. For this, India would cooperate on the exchange of information, coastal surveillance, the building of infrastructure and strengthening their capabilities. So here let's make a mind map. What is Saga? Security and growth for all in the region. It is unveiled in the year 2015. What does it aim for? It aims for ensuring peace, stability, prosperity of India in Indian Ocean region and it seeks to deepen the economic and security cooperation with its maritime neighbours and India will also assist in building the neighbours maritime security capabilities. And how does India do this? Through exchange of information, coastal surveillance and helping in building the infrastructure and helping in strengthening their capabilities. Now let's move on to see about the goals of the saga. See the first one is enhancing capacities to safeguard land and maritime territories and interest. The second one is deepening economic and security cooperation in the littoral. Littoral here is nothing but the states that are bordering Indian Ocean. The next goal is promoting collective action to deal with the natural disasters, maritime threats like piracy, terrorism and emerging non-state actors. And the next one is working towards sustainable regional development through enhanced collaboration. And the fifth one is engaging with countries beyond our shores with the aim of building greater trust and promoting respect for maritime rules, norms and peaceful resolution of disputes. And these are the goals of Saga. See, Saga also aims to enhance the prospects of sustainable development for all. See, it promotes greater collaboration in many areas. Now we are going to see those areas. They are trade, tourism, investment, infrastructure development, marine science and technology, sustainable fisheries, protection of marine environment, overall development of ocean or blue economy. See, blue economy presents India with an unprecedented opportunity to meet its national socio-economic objectives like livelihood generation, achieving energy security, building ecological resilience, etc. So, blue economy, that is, the marine economy, has such capabilities. See, India's greatest strength is its central location at the head of Indian Ocean, allowing it to access every part of Indian Ocean region without any obstruction. See, India has concentrated on issues that are of priority to smaller nations, that is the security of natural resources, sustainable development, protection from natural disasters and controlling the ill effects of marine pollution and climate change. So, the Sagar initiative gives India the opportunity to enable free movement of people, goods and services across the Indian Ocean region. The enhancement of connectivity and the integration of markets would be mutually beneficial to all nations. People-to-people -people interactions can aid in ensuring stability in the region and access to large markets will enable the smaller nations to have the means to support sustainable economic progress. So that's all about this news article. Now let's have a quick recap. What all we saw, we saw about Saga, which stands for security and growth for all in the region. It was unveiled in the year 2015. It aims to ensure peace, stability and prosperity of India. And apart from the self-interest, it also seeks to deepen the economic and security cooperation with other maritime neighbours 
and india also seeks to assist in building their maritime security capabilities and after that we moved on to see about the goals of sagar which is safeguarding land and maritime territories deepening economic and security cooperation action to deal with natural disasters and maritime threats working towards sustainable regional development and engaging with countries beyond our shores with the aim of building greater trust and promoting respect for maritime rules and peaceful resolution of disputes and we saw some of the areas of prospects for sustainable development and what are those areas trade tourism infrastructure development marine science and technology sustainable fisheries protection of marine environment blue economy and after that we saw some of the important points about india and the sagar see india is at the center of indian ocean and it has access to every other littoral states of indian ocean so far india has concentrated on issues that are important to smaller nations such as natural resources sustainable development natural disasters and the marine pollution and climate change and why is this see this is because smaller nations they get affected by these characteristics a lot so india helps smaller nations by addressing these issues and we saw that india through this initiative that is the sagar initiative enables free movement of people goods services across the indian ocean region see the people to people interaction aids sustainability in the region from the free movement of goods and services what is happening integration of markets is happening so by getting access to large markets small nations are able to support their sustainable economic progress and with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next article discussion look at this news article this article states that the pakistan's prime minister imran khan got the presidential nod for the dissolution of parliament this move is seen as unconstitutional by the opposition parties so the opposition parties have approached the supreme court to challenge the decision pakistan supreme court barred all the state institutions from taking any extra constitutional steps in the wake of the dismissal of no confidence vote in the national assembly and this is the crux of the article given here see here we are not going to discuss about the no confidence vote that happened in the national assembly in pakistan instead we are going to discuss about the types of motion that can be passed in the indian parliament it will be helpful for your prelims and with that note now we'll discuss some of the basics about a motion see no discussion on a matter of general public importance can take place in the parliament except on a motion made with the consent of the presiding officer so what does this mean see if you are a member of the parliament and you want to discuss a matter of public importance you have to get the consent of the presiding officer and you have to move a motion then only you can discuss about it simply motion refers to any formal proposal made by a member with the intent of obtaining house decision this is the basics about the motion now we'll discuss about the types firstly let's see about the closure motion as the name suggests it is to close something or to stop something see it is a motion moved by a member to cut short the debate that is going on inside the house if the closure motion is approved by the house then the debate will be stopped and the matter is put to vote note that there are four kinds of closure motions they are simple closure it is the one when a member moves that the matter have been sufficiently discussed and can be now put to vote let's say a debate about a matter of public importance is going on inside the house and a particular member of the parliament feels that the matter has been discussed widely and it can be put to vote then he can move simple closure motion another type is closure by compartments see this is also very easy to understand a bill has many clauses right so the clauses of a bill or a lengthy resolution are grouped into parts before the commencement of the debate about the bill or the resolution and what happens here the debate covers the part as a whole and the entire part is put to vote that is the whole compartment that is why closure by compartment motion now let's move on to the next one which is the kangaroo closure under this type only important clauses are taken up for the debate and also for voting and the other clauses are skipped over what does a kangaroo do it leaps from one place to another right that is why the name kangaroo closure is given 
because we are also skipping certain clauses now moving to the last one which is the guillotine closure it is the one when undiscussed clauses of the bill or a resolution are put to vote along with the discussed ones this is due to time constraint and that is all about the closure motion and the types of closure motion now we'll see the next type which is the privilege motion see this is concerned with the breach of parliamentary privileges by a minister who moves it it is moved by a member when he feels that a minister has committed a breach of privilege of the house by withholding facts or by giving wrong facts moving on to the next one it is the calling attention motion it is introduced in the parliament by a member to call the attention of a minister to a matter of public importance see this motion seeks an authoritative statement from the minister on that matter interesting fact here is that it is like zero hour why it is like zero hour because it is an indian innovation in the parliamentary procedure and has been in existence since 1954 however the difference is that unlike zero hour it is mentioned in the rules of procedure what is mentioned in the rules of procedure calling attention motion but zero hour it is not mentioned in the rules of procedure but both zero hour and calling attention motion they are indian innovation in the parliamentary procedure these are all some facts that you have to remember now the next important motion is adjournment motion see it is introduced in the parliament to draw the attention of the house to a definite matter of urgent public importance see this motion it needs the support of 50 members to be admitted it is regarded as an extraordinary device because it interrupts the normal business of the house it involves an element of censure against the government censure here means disapproval against the government or criticism about the government and that is exactly why rajya sabha is not permitted to make use of this device only lok sabha can use it and that's all about the adjournment motion now coming to the very important motion which is the no confidence motion see article 75 of the constitution says that the council of minister shall be collectively responsible to the lok sabha it means that the ministry stays in office as long as it enjoys confidence of the majority of members of the lok sabha see no confidence motion need not state the reasons for its adoption in the lok sabha so if a member wants to move no confidence motion he or she need not state the reasons at all and more important thing is that it can be moved against the entire council of ministers only it can't be moved against one particular minister and what is the purpose of this motion it is moved for ascertaining the confidence of lok sabha in the council of ministers if it is passed in the lok sabha the council of ministers must resign from the office as you know a government can only function if it has a majority in the lok sabha right the party can remain in power when it shows its strength through a floor test which is primarily taken to know whether the executive enjoys the confidence of the legislature or not So just to check whether the government enjoys majority in the Lok Sabha or not a confidence motion can be introduced this motion can be introduced by a member of house who believes that the government in power lacks a majority see if the motion is approved what does this mean it means that the ruling party must demonstrate that it has the majority in the house now here you might have a doubt who actually approves the motion see a no confidence motion can be moved by any member of the house by house i mean here the lok sabha so any member of lok sabha can move a no confidence motion but for that speaker's permission is required and the motion has to be supported by at least 50 mps remember here sometimes the speaker can refuse to admit the motion if the speaker accepts the motion then the speaker will set a date for the motion's discussion otherwise the motion fails and the member who moved the motion will be informed about it and that's all about the article here now we'll have a quick recap we saw about the basics of motion which is a formal proposal made by a member with the intent of obtaining a house decision and after that we moved on to see about different types of motions the first one we saw is closure motion which is moved by a member to cut short the debate and what is costed on that particular discussion under this closure motion we saw four types which is simple closure closure by compartments kangaroo closure guillotine closure simple closure is when the matter has been sufficiently discussed it is put to vote closure by compartments is the debate covers the part as a whole and the entire part is put to vote kangaroo closure is certain clauses are skipped and the other important ones are voted 
gelatin closures and discussed clauses are also voted along with the discussed ones after that we saw about the privilege motion which is moved by a member when he or she feels that the minister has committed a breach of privilege of the house by withholding facts or giving wrong facts after that we saw the calling attention motion which is introduced in the parliament by a member to call the attention of a minister to a matter of urgent public importance it is like zero r why it is like a zero r because it is also an indian innovation in the parliamentary procedure and after that we saw the adjournment motion which is introduced to draw attention of the house to a definite matter of public importance it interrupts the normal business of the house and it is permitted only in lok sabha and it needs the support of 50 members and finally we ended our discussion with the no confidence motion which can be only moved in lok sabha because article 75 of the constitution says that the council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to lok sabha see this motion is moved to test the majority enjoyed by the ruling government in the legislature as we all know a government can function only if it has majority in the lok sabha so if this motion is introduced and it is admitted it means that the ruling party must demonstrate that it has majority in the house it is moved by any member in the lok sabha but it requires the permission of speaker and it must be supported by at least 50 mps and with these points in mind now let's move on to the next article discussion look at this news article this article states that the karnataka distribution companies that is the discoms have become the top seller of renewable energy under the green term ahead market gtam at indian energy exchange limited the article mentions that karnataka is a renewable rich state with a total installed capacity base of 15 gigawatt and it is one of the pioneers in renewable energy addition in the country and a key stakeholder in achieving the country's renewable energy goals See the article also says that Karnataka is the only state in the country which is over achieving RPO. RPO here is nothing but renewable purchase obligation in both solar and non-solar segments apart from Andhra Pradesh. See this is the crux of the article given here. In this context we'll revise about the renewable energy and its types. See this discussion will be useful for both prelims and mains. First of all we'll see about renewable energy and its significance. See renewable energy often referred to as clean energy comes from natural sources or processes that are constantly replenished. Replenished means they are constantly filled up. There are several alternative and renewable sources of energy which are not only environment friendly but can also be available in abundance. Example for renewable energy sources are water, wind, sunlight, geothermal, sea waves, hydrogen and biomass. In addition to the renewability, there are other reasons why we should look to switching over to renewable resources. See the main reason is to reduce the pollutants, to reduce greenhouse gases and to reduce toxins that are the byproducts of non-renewable energy sources. See the use of alternative energy sources can help preserve the delicate ecological balance of the earth and it helps conserve the non-renewable energy sources like fossil fuels. See renewable energy sources they are inexhaustible which means it never runs out or it never gets depleted. And with this basic understanding now we'll see the different types of renewable energy. The first one we are going to discuss is solar energy. See the sun has been providing us heat and light for billions of years and it is expected that it will continue to do so for another billion years to come. See sun is one of the most powerful renewable sources of energy for the future. It is used commonly for heating, cooking, production of electricity and even in the desalination of sea water. With the help of solar cells, solar energy is converted into electricity. One of the most common uses of the sun's energy has been for water heating systems. It is also used to provide power to vehicles, generate electricity, lighting the street lights and cooking etc. On a small scale, solar energy is being used to heat up water for daily use in our homes and also the swimming pools. On a larger scale, 
solar energy could be used to run cars power plants and even spaceships and with this understanding of basics about solar energy we'll move on to see about wind power see it is another alternative energy source that could be used without producing by products that are harmful to nature here by products such as greenhouse gases ozone depleting gases particulate matter and other toxins see like solar power harnessing the wind is highly dependent on weather and location it is true right you can't harness the wind power everywhere however it is one of the oldest and cleanest forms of energy and the most developed of the renewable energy sources see wind energy is free of cost and it is reliable wind power is clean and it produces no environmental pollution since wind is a renewable source of energy we never run out of it and there is also an additional advantage farming and grazing can still take place on land occupied by wind turbines which can help in the production of biofuels see the land beneath the windmill can still be used for farming purposes and also note that wind farms can be built offshore that is in the middle of the sea in some cases wind farms can even be tourist attractions and that's all about the wind energy now let's move on to see the next type which is the hydroelectric energy see like wind energy the flowing of water and the water stored in huge dams is also a very important source of energy which is known as the hydroelectric energy it is a source of renewable energy in the form of hydroelectric power the electricity can be generated constantly because there are no external factors which affect the availability of water hydroelectric power produces no waste or pollution since no chemicals are used here then how electricity is generated it utilizes the water flowing from higher gradient to lower gradient see water used for hydroelectric power can be reused for other purposes like irrigation and now coming to the final one which is the geothermal energy geothermal energy is another alternative source of energy it is obtained from the internal heat of the earth in fact it is one of the oldest type of natural sources of heat it dates back to Roman times when the heat from earth was used instead of fire to heat rooms or to warm the water for baths presently it is being used as a source for producing electricity mainly in regions of tectonic plate movement see basically a geothermal hot spot is an area of reduced thickness in the mantle which sends the excess internal heat from the interior of the earth to the outer crust These hot spots are well known for their unique effects seen on the earth surface such as the volcanic islands the mineral deposits and the geysers geysers here is hot springs see the heat from these geothermal hot spots is altered in the form of steam which is used to run a steam turbine that can generate electricity and that is all about the geothermal energy source see we saw different types of renewable energy right do you remember what are they they are water wind sunlight geothermal sea waves hydrogen and biomass right see in this discussion we have covered only a few we covered solar energy wind energy after that we covered hydroelectric and geothermal energy so go and read about the hydrogen and biomass and sea waves which are used as alternative sources of energy or renewable energy sources and that is all about the news article given here we'll have a quick recap we saw about renewable energy which is referred to as clean energy and it comes from natural resources and they are constantly replenished that is they don't get exhausted we saw the types which includes water wind sunlight geothermal sea waves hydrogen and biomass and we saw the significance which is it preserves the delicate ecological balance of the earth it helps conserve the non renewable energy sources like fossil fuels and it helps reduce the pollutants greenhouse gases and toxins that are the by products of non renewable energy sources and after that we saw about solar energy we saw it is used for heating cooking production of electricity and in the desalinization of sea water and it provides power to vehicles and it can be used to generate electricity it is used for lighting street lights cooking etc and after that we saw about wind power we saw that it is weather and location dependent and it is free of cost and reliable and we saw that 
even though the land is utilized for having wind turbines or windmills farming grazing can still be done on the land and in some cases it even attracts tourists and after that we saw about hydroelectric energy which utilizes the energy from flowing water and water stored in huge dams and finally we ended our discussion by seeing geothermal energy which is obtained from the internal heat of the earth see it is a source for producing electricity mainly in regions of tectonic plate movement and this region is called as geothermal hotspot they are well known for unique effects such as volcanic effects mineral deposits and geysers and with these points in mind now let's move on to the next part of our discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion today we have three prelims questions we'll solve them one by one and i have one quiz question for you now let's solve the first question consider the following statements with reference to security and growth for all in the region that is sagar statement 1 it gives priority to indian ocean region for ensuring peace stability and prosperity of india in the indian ocean region statement 2 one of its objective is the overall development of ocean or blue economy see if you recall our discussion you will know that both the statements given here are correct see sagar is a maritime initiative which gives priority to indian ocean region for ensuring peace stability and prosperity of india in indian ocean region through sagar india seeks to deepen economic and security cooperation with its maritime neighbors and it also assists in building the neighbors maritime security capabilities and we saw some of the areas of collaboration what are those areas they are trade tourism investment infrastructure development marine science and technology sustainable fisheries protection of marine environment and overall development of ocean or blue economy so the correct option here is option c both 1 and 2 moving on to the next question which of the following motions requires the support of 50 members to be admitted adjournment motion no confidence motion calling attention motion let me give you a minute to think about this try to recall our discussion exactly see both adjournment motion and no confidence motion requires 50 members support to be admitted and both can be introduced in lok sabha only no such requirements is needed in the case of calling attention motion so the correct option here is option c 1 and 2 only moving on to the final question which is the quiz question for you aspirants which of the following can be considered as renewable sources of energy nuclear energy hydrogen energy geothermal energy energy from natural gas see this is a very simple question use elimination technique for this question you will easily arrive at the answer and try to recall our discussion also it will be helpful for you attempt this question and post your answer in the comment section i have given a mains question for your practice so interested aspirants write it and post it in the comment section if you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today post that also in the comment section and with that we have come to the end if you find the video useful like share and comment and do subscribe to shankarayya's academy's youtube channel for further updates thank you